So before the guys get here, let me kind of show you what our status is in the backyard or in the back living room. You can see that the paver and brick throw rug or platform for the table that will reside there. I envision it to be like a great big groaning board table, pretty rustic. That has been complete and we've still got this other area abutting up against the steps to complete, but there will be a tree in there, a small tree, and I'm not wanting to plant it just yet. However, I have to say that the temperatures have changed. They've moderated somewhat, hallelujah. And more importantly, we've gotten some much needed rain. So every space, as I often say, I call it my theory of garden relativity. Every one thing in the garden relates to every other thing. So let's discuss that as we look at these pavers that head from the patio out to the gate. You can see now that the mulch mix, and by the way, so many of you asked, that is just a combination of the Happy Grow landscape conditioner mix and some pea gravel. And really the ratio kind of changes just depend, depending on the location and my, my mood, I guess. Don't you love the way the lattice work creates a shadow on the ground? I love that. And by the way, this lattice, if you are new to the channel, and if you are, please make sure to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, share with anyone you think might be interested, and, and definitely comment. But the lattice work that we put on top of the existing fence and then painted slash stained to be the same color does what I intended it to do and that was it extends the height of the fence because it felt it felt just oh very exposed back here and I wanted that privacy this gives you kind of an overview of where things stand right now. I know it looks too cluttered, you guys often say, um, despite, despite my always mentioning that we're in process, that things look too cluttered, but I, that will go away and there is method to my madness, I promise. So I think that that was a really good decision. It's something that I did at the other house. And if a solution presents itself for a slightly different problem, but it's the same solution, then I'm all about that. So let's look here. And there will probably be something around this gate to make it a little bit more interesting, but that, that will be one of the fine points, the fine tuning that we will really decide on at the end. But then the pathway, now we've got the mulch in place. The pathway extends all the way up to the social patio. It looks very nice, I think. And the flagstone is, is for the most part recessed, but there will be settling over time and it will continue to recess a little bit more. We did replace the smaller flagstone with some larger pavers and the smaller flagstone pieces that were there temporarily have been moved to other areas. My, one of my, my um, overarching concerns was just that we use as much of the material that we had as possible we obviously bought some new bricks and things, but I wanted to use and repurpose whatever flagstone, brick, whatever that we had lying around from the front yard, but also that I just found was left over from the previous owners and was out in the garage. So you'll see that this will be 
This will be very practical right here. And we matched the platform for the storage ch chest, storage shed, which will be painted slash stained to match the other existing features. So now that looks kind of comprehensive. And then over here, and just trust me on this, <laughs> um, we're making a transition area so that the patio relates to the giant throw rug that's underneath the table. It also then will relate to the steps so that coming down the steps to the table or down the steps to the patio and then eventually we'll also put pavers to the garage everything relates to everything else <clears throat> and we won't have to step on mud or mulch or whatever to get to where we're going so i think it looks as if it all blends together pretty nicely there will be a few soft plantings in here and i'll share that list with you a little bit later they are primarily Southern living plants. So I'm gonna be using some, hopefully if I can get them, pancake arborvita and perhaps some Dragon Prince cryptomeria. And then I'll also be using some things from up front now that the front has matured so much more quickly than I anticipated, I'll be able to use some things from there. And then the brick facing on these beautiful sweeping steps. And that's my question of the day. I mean, just indulge me. How much do you love these sweeping steps? Then ultimately, <clears throat> I mentioned it before, but ultimately there will probably be an awning over that door. There will be some pots climbing up and down the steps, probably with some topiary. And by the way, don't forget that it, I have declared it topiary month, so let me know your projects. Then there'll be a railing. That will be one of the final things. It's still, that still has to be sealed. Then the very, the very final thing to be addressed, because right now it's just a catch-all, is this area over here. I still have not hooked up the water barrel, but I will do that. And there will be some plantings around it to make it look uh, much nicer, much softer. And then this is very exciting. So yesterday, Kayla and her guys put together these other two raised beds. And I will show you maybe this weekend or maybe in a separate video, the process of that. They did it in her workshop and she kindly filmed it for me. But you see that now I have one, two, three equidistant filling that space and they in turn will eventually be filled with vegetables. We are gonna put some one other layer of support, a bracket on it that Kayla addressed earlier. And yes, you guys, I know you often mention it and it does not escape me how fortunate I am to have such artists and craftsmen like Javier and Sergio and Galen and Fernando and Kayla. I mean, everyone, Manuel, to do this work for me. Um, so those will be filled in. And then in this corner, I, I, I may just do, I don't wanna overplant it and I don't wanna to get too much shade. So there may just be one rather large multi-trunk Yopon Holly in the corner there. Um, somebody asked, or actually a number of you asked, well, will I have too much shade back here? And I really won't 
one of the reasons it always looks so shady is because I typically do try to shoot when it's shadier out here because the light is less harsh. It's easier for you to see things that I'm talking about. It's far more beautiful. It's far less stressful because it's not, it's not so hot on the photographer. And then also because in the harshest part of the day, a lot of the leaves of the plantings will temporarily go limp and that's not as attractive. So I really, really try to shoot when you can get an idea of what it looks at its best. Lord knows I show you enough of my, of my warts and what it looks like the uglies before the beautiful aspects of it. And yes, there will be a potting area where I will store probably the majority of the pots and things. But once I get the outside staged, a lot of things are going to go away. A lot of my garden ornaments that I have, if I don't have use for them, then, then they will go away. I'll keep some of them as seasonal items, but I will give away a lot of the additional things. Um, Sergio took a lot of my pots the other day for his garden, and I am happy to get rid of what I don't need. Simpler is better. Where are these mounds? of Happy Grow Landscaper mix are now residing. Let me show you the bag. Do love that stuff. There will be a few rounded, mounded plants in here. So it will be a village of mounded plants that are largely evergreen and largely gray. And I will show you some inspiration pics of that a little bit later. Some that, gosh, that I've had for years just waiting to be able in some way to use them in my landscape. Right now, it's kind of been pineapple upside down with the furniture. I'm still kind of deciding where everything goes in all likelihood, at least for now. The other two matching chairs that match this latticework furniture, and by the way, this came from Jan's patio a million years ago. It's been repainted several times. It will probably need to be repainted again. But the other two chairs that are currently on the social patio will move back here. And then I'll show you, at least at this point, what I think the, the furniture solution for the front yard is going to be. I've ordered the table upon which, or bench upon which my wood stand will rest. And I will show that to you once, once I get it. I try to shop local when I can, but sometimes when I need things that are very, very specific, let's face it, it's just more convenient to put in dimensions and find it online, and especially if it's something large and have it delivered to you. I'll be happy when um, I am not up to my neck in eyeballs because that does distress me some, or up to my neck in, <laughs> up to my eyeballs, up to my neck in cardboard. I mixed my metaphors there. And I won't have so many things coming in, but I am, I am setting all of this up for sure. I think I need something to hang to the right or something tall that needs to go just to the right in that expansive brick of the back door. So I'll be thinking about that. The windows will go in later in the month. So I am hoping that by the end of August, I will be almost finished in the backyard. So there is an update 
on the backyard and I'll go give you a little brief update on the front which is as busy as ever with pollinators and yes some monarchs have arrived. Well, let me talk a little bit about the flagstone path here on the east side of the cottage. I know so many of you are concerned about people falling and that it's not foot sure. In actuality, it is far more foot sure than it appears on camera. It would be impractical to put any kind of long wrought iron railing along here. So that will not happen. But anyone who may not be as steady on their feet or if I'm carrying something heavy or whatever, there is a solid concrete path on the west side. And I typically don't show it because usually it's obstructed with brick or just lots of things that really prevent you getting a good look at it but once everything is in its place then I will show you just how easy it is to move from one place in the front to another place in the back now is this a much more beautiful um, route to take it definitely is and let me just pause for a minute this ajuga is just going bonkers and doing exactly what I want it to do, which is to spill over the side. Eventually it will creep in between some of the flagstones. I will allow a little bit of that. And then when all of these pink encore azaleas are in bloom in the spring, it will be magnificent. You can see how they're sputtering out with some blooms right now. Let me get you gals ready for your close-up? That pink is just beautiful. And the encores are our favorite re-blooming azalea. Plant, bloom in the spring, sporadically in the summer, and then re-bloom in the fall. And I love the fact that these moon dance hydrangeas, these are also Southern Living Plant Collection, are blooming when the other ones in the front are starting to brown and really give it up. And these are gonna be just beautiful. And this is their first year and you can see that they are as loved by pollinators as other things in the front yard. And I am getting additional height on these evergreens here that I like and eventually they will give me more privacy in front of my bedroom window. I still, I, I'm still not 100% sure what I'm gonna be doing with this area other than climbing the rows up and around the door and staging some plants on the steps. And by the way, so many of you have ordered these solar carriage lights and I need to order some more from the back. They're just, they're just brilliant. What can I say? They illuminate this area. They are good looking. They require no power other than what the sun provides. And they're really, really wonderful. This is kind of a unique perspective for me to do a walkabout from. Typically, I'm starting in the front. I am eager. My rose is tucked back in there. And for right now, it's not doing a whole lot. But get some maturity on that baby and pretty soon I think it will take off. Here's something that I wanted to show you. And that is, I have a little olive tree, a little tabletop olive tree, and I am no steward, so you can see there where I've pruned it back. It is starting to put out some new buds, new green little leaves. And I am starting to feed it pretty aggressively right now. A lot of you ask how I fertilize 
and I in my container plantings yes I do use miracle Grow. I'm sorry it works and I reserve my organic fertilizers for what is in the flower beds and I will share some of those later you guys know I'm a huge fan of all the Espoma products but here's one that I've been trying because it's liquid I want to show it to you I don't know if you can see that or not I'll put a link below super thrive it's a liquid concentrate it is organic and what in 1940 it won the world's fair gold medal well okay that is a testament to how well it works i'm about out of that bottle and we'll have to order some more and plants that look like they're struggling or that i just want to really show some extra love i give them a big dose of that look at how beautifully this Eugenia topiary is coming along. It has filled out so much from the bedraggled thing that it started out to be when I first plopped it in this place. The scented geraniums in the pots continue to smell as fragrant as always. And then this area here, these two chairs, they will move to the back along with the rest of the family. So all of that furniture in the back will coordinate. I, don't, I need to put my umbrella up. I've had it down the past two days because of the wind and because of the rain, I need to put it back up because it's kind of steamy. Lots and lots of walkers out this morning. These cooler temps have really, really brought people out. And by the way, I think I told you earlier in the week that at Home Depot right now, there are all sorts of these Eugenia topiaries at a very good price. They were very healthy. <clears throat> they had single ball forms. They had these multiple ball forms. And it's this location where once it gets too cold for them, because they are not frost hardy, these will, they, these are in pots in the ground. They will be taken out and replaced by those topiary encore azaleas that are in the back. And that should be beautiful in the spring. Plus, they'll be up here where I see them, and I'll give them a little bit more TLC. As things are coming into their specific season, that's when I really begin to show them some love in additional watering or additional fertilizing or whatever it is that they might need. Now, what has kind of struggled though they look much happier now and that is these pots up here on the front porch but i gave them a dose of organic feed when the temperatures cooled and they are starting to fill out again and also put some more blooms out both the lavender variety there's those sweet little pollinators and the diamond frost euphorbia the one thing that I will be cutting back today that isn't too happy and that was this gray uh, helichrysum or helichrysum or dichondra or it's one of those in the gray family so I'll be cutting it back and likewise, I've, I've pruned quite a bit, but boy, look at how happy that lantana is in the window box. I need to expose, you can see in the lower left corner where there's some pentas, and I really, I need to cut some of that stuff back so you can see them more. But this is filled in very, very nicely, and right now it seems to me that the lavender lantana 
is the winner. Some of the scaviola has struggled. The two Cranberry Creek boxwood, and I imagine I'll have more of those in my cart. The Cranberry Creek boxwood, I ordered two more of them. I'm up to six now, I believe. They are also settling in. I had some reservations because I planted them when it was fairly hot, but they seem to be doing, they seem to be doing well. The little pile of flagstone that you see there slowly but surely are replacing any of the square pavers that I was use, using as stepping stones here on the upper terrace. And because I needed more of them in the back and I didn't want to buy any more and I wanted to use up the flagstone that I had. I am, as much as I have loved this garden in spring and in summer, I, I have to tell you, I shouldn't wish my life away. I should live in the moment, but boy, am I looking forward to fall and be decking this whole area with pumpkins and gourds and mums. Should have gotten out here earlier. Same reason, the light is harsh back here. I have, as I told you last week, pulled out lots of the Cleome. And I also cut back the crazy pink Echinacea. And I wanna show you how, with the rain, I am being rewarded with new growth. So if you look at the base, you can see that there's all sorts of new growth. Even this one that I cut back even harder. There's all sorts of new growth coming out. And when they bush out, when they flush out once again, then they'll be beautiful and the plant will look that much better for it. Now, I not all is raindrops and lollipops in the upper terrace, on the upper terrace, because I do have, it's very surprising for me, Kayla and I were talking about this. I don't ever, in my Oklahoma garden, remember seeing aphids in the past this time of year. They typically come in when it's cooler, but right now, you can see where I've already sloughed some of them off. Me, I can't tell if I'm getting good resolution or not, but there are all sorts of aphids on this milkweed, which is interesting to me, and I'm surprised that I haven't seen more ladybugs. As buggy an area, with, and all of the happy pollinators are here. I'm surprised I haven't seen more ladybugs. So that's another question for you. Um, I'm, I'm really intrigued by the fact that, and the other thing is, happily, I do not see aphids on anything else but the milkweed. Now, Kayla was saying she saw it, saw some on her okra, but this is a really strange time of year for us to be seeing them. So I will come back in here and I'll slough most of them off and maybe give it a jet spray and remove them that way because I don't want to use any chemicals up here with my little pollinators. And let me just stop here for a moment maybe close on this beautiful white Cleome. This came into bloom later and so because of that it is fresher and it's blooming in tandem with some zinnias and still the butterfly candy continues going strong though I have lots of deadheading to do. So there you go. There is your Wednesday walkabout. Thank you for spending time with me and visiting the cottage on the hill.